Did you know that if we have 19 times 21, we can just do 20 times 20, which is 400, then take away one to give 399. Let's see that again. If we've got 49 times 51, we can just do 50 times 50, which is 2,500, then take away one to give 2,499. It's like the Goldilocks of math and magic tricks. One's too hot, one's too cold, but that one in the middle is just right. The idea is that if we take any number and multiply the numbers either side of it, the answer will be one less than our number multiplied by itself. And because of that, if we're faced with a 79 times 81, we don't need to panic because help is nearby. We can just do 80 times 80, then take away one. Now, a great way to multiply numbers ending in zero is to use what I like to call the Zerumerang. Two zeros go out, we multiply what's left, eight times eight is 64, two zeros come back, 6,400. So 79 times 81 must be 6399. Just like a warm bowl of porridge on a winter's day, that was outstanding. Now this technique is particularly useful for numbers either side of one that ends in zero, because they're usually easier to square, but it'll work for any number. But why does it work? Well, it's all thanks to a bit of algecadabra magic, which I'll put in the caption with a little challenge for you, but we can also look at it visually. Let's take the number four, represented by four dots, and now let's square it, or multiply it by itself. That gives 16 dots. Now let's chop off this column at the end, and we're gonna swivel it down here. It's still the same amount of dots, just rearranged slightly, but look what we have here. This rectangle represents the multiplication three times five. Then we've got one extra dot all by itself. So three times five is one less than four times four. And what I love about this technique is not only is it great in a mental math situation, as well as in an exploration of multiplication and squaring and algebra, but it can really improve our confidence with calculation. In many countries, the maths curriculum at school is so jam packed that it leaves teachers and students with very little time to explore to experiment, to play. If we don't get along with the few methods we're exposed to, we might think the subject is just not for us. It's like going to art class and only learning about crayons. What if graphite's our jam? Or glass paint? Or gouache? Maths is no different. A method like this shows us that there are other ways of colouring the canvas, and we can find the ways that work for us. But at the very least, it shows us that we can turn gruesomes into awesomes by looking to nearby by numbers that might be easier to calculate with. As the Australians taught us, that's when good neighbours become good friends. Now, if you want a bit more math and magic in your life, check out our fantastic books, courses and resources on our website at sumsofanarchy.com. They'll help you level up your maths game the Sums of Anarchy way.